So what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today we're going to do a video on my 2020 Ram. Now I got this truck back in March and this is a company car and I wanted to give you guys some great footage but as you know the world events is keeping that from happening because I'm not allowed to go anywhere technically so I'm supposed to work from home and so this truck has just been sitting in my driveway but today we're on vacation and actually well we've been on vacation for a week now I've just been snaking you guys but I am going to get some footage for you guys on the way home so this is going to be a 2020 Ram 1500 it is a crew cab it is a Laramie so this is basically the mid-level um, option that you can get or trim package you have a Longhorn and a Limited above this and you have a big horn and tradesman below it. I mean, there's a lot of different options and trim packages that you can choose from. On this one, they have a night edition, they have a sport appearance. There's so many ways you can dress this truck up, but I have the Country Boy Laramie Edition, and I love the interior. So like I said, we have 600 miles to get home. I'm gonna go grab my family so we can go ahead and get on the road, and that way you guys can get some footage of the truck. One thing about the Ram is the floor space it's so big and so deep. You can get so many bags. Like this is one bag here. And there's basically three bags in the center here. But one thing I always tell my kids to do is to close this back here. So it doesn't break. This is this little cover for the power plug outlet in the back. But yeah, a lot of space back here kids can get comfortable and if you don't know these back seats do recline Start. So let's see what we got. So this is a cold start. Let's see. I'm gonna reset this when we get on the road, though. So right now I'm at 16.4. We got 136 miles, so I'm empty. So here's the uh, tire pressure. The door says yes. <laughs> so the door says 36 and 36. All right, so we're at 36 out back and 32 up front, so I might put some air in the tires too. That way we get the best fuel economy. All right, so here we go. Saying goodbye to family, and we are on the road. All right, so we're at the gas station right now. I'm gonna see if I can get some air first, and then I'll fill up with some gas. Looks like the air is on this side. All right, so my tire pressure out back is at 36. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more air on the front tires. Normally you're supposed to put air in the tires when the tires are cold, but I didn't have an air pump where we were. So check this out. It's a dollar 50 for air. So what I'm gonna do is I gotta make sure I make this count. So I already have the valve caps off. So I have the hose around on the other side to make sure it will reach. And I'm going to unfortunately have to swipe a car because I don't have any change on me, so it is what it is, I guess. Authorizing, I click air. Here we go. All right, let's keep the truck on so we can see what the air is, too, guys. There it is. Now, if you're not familiar, you do have a 23 gallon tank on this truck that's standard. You can upgrade to a 26 or 33 gallon tank, but you have to get a Laramie level two package, which is gonna cost you like five grand. So just keep that in mind. All right, so 13 gallons at $28. We were just a little bit under a half a tank. So let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and reset the computer before I start it. I'll reset it. I did air up the tires in the front to 38, 39. It went up a little bit on the left side. 
and let's see, I'm gonna reset this. All right, and I'll let you guys know what the fuel economy was on that run there too, on the video. So let's go ahead and get going. We have 557 miles on here that we have to go. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll see you in a second. So the stop start system and the Ram truck with the mild hybrid system are really good. Um, in the past, I've always noticed, like my Durango, my Jeep Grand Cherokees, they were like really sluggish. And I had one issue where one of my cars just turned off, like, and I had to restart it because of the stop start. So every time I got in the car, I would turn it off. Now I normally turn it off in the summertime because it just gets too hot inside the cockpit. But in the wintertime, when the stop starts on, it does work better because if the car's already warm, you don't have to worry about getting uncomfortable inside of it. Now, as far as the advertised miles per gallon for the city and highway goes, you're gonna get 22 on the highway, 17 in the city, and 19 combined. I think that without e-torque, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like 15 on the city. But as far as fuel cost goes, this truck is pretty expensive. So figure you're gonna spend about $2,350, depending on how many miles you plan on driving your car a year. But overall, let's see what this truck will get. And if you haven't had a chance yet, be sure to check out the video I did. I'll put it at the end of this video. I basically did an in-depth walk around on this truck, so I go over a lot of the features on it. Really good information there, especially about towing. So let's get back to the video. All right, so we've been driving for about 30 minutes, 18 miles at 22 MPG. So we're going through some towns and some cities, and now currently I'm doing 60 miles an hour on cruise control. But overall, I mean, this truck definitely is geared the way that this is built for fuel mileage. So this truck has a 321 axle, and this truck has MDS, so it's going to deactivate four cylinders if you're just driving at a constant speed. And it has a stop start system, so I was using the stop start system in the city just now, and so that helped a lot too. So 22.1, and my instant or current MPG is saying 22.23, so that's not bad so 60 miles an hour no um, inclines so it's just flat ground too so that's that's pretty good for this truck so this truck can definitely get that so we'll see what it says at the pump once we get there and when I go on the highway I'm going 75 80 miles an hour it's gonna probably change a little bit too I wanted to clarify something I said in a video if you do choose a 5.7 with e-torque you do have an option to have a bigger fuel tank 23 gallons is standard if you would like to have a 26 gallon tank, you do have to choose Laramie Level 2. That's almost $5,000 added to the truck. If you choose a 33 gallon, which is probably perfect for towing, you can choose between Level 1 or Level 2. So $17.95 versus $48.95. But you have to include the $445 charge for the tank. Now that's not bad, but of course you get more options for the truck, which is not a bad thing. 392 axle is optional for 95 bucks. And that's pretty much everything I want to clarify too. So if you're in the market, hopefully for 2021, they changed the option to have a package for a fuel tank. I don't know why they did that. I feel like it's kind of like a sales gimmick in my opinion. I wish they wouldn't do that, but nevertheless, they're the manufacturer. They know what's best for their trucks. I'm going about 65 miles an hour now, and I'm at about 1500 RPMs, and I am in eighth gear. So this does have the eight HP 75 transmission cruising at this speed it's always going to be locked in eighth gear at this point but 1500 rpms that's going to probably contribute a lot to the fuel economy so i just went up five miles per hour and it looks like i'm getting a little bit better fuel economy so 65 is the sweet spot all right guys so we took a quick pit stop here in cincinnati ohio man check out how dirty the truck is the truck is so dirty i gotta i need to clean the windshield with this sucker dirty so we don't have this restaurant here in maryland so we're gonna take a quick pit stop to raising canes i'm gonna check and see if the inside is open because i prefer to sit down and eat oh it looks like they're not open on the inside so i guess we'll just have to go through the line let's take a look what they have on the menu they got a chicken sandwich I'm probably gonna get this right here. 
six chicken fingers. Actually, that might be too much. We'll get the three chicken fingers. Or maybe we'll get that, the box combo. I don't know. Everything looks good right now. All right, so we've driven 82 miles at 20.2 MPG. I dropped a little bit. I'm doing about 75, 80 miles an hour. I'm sorry. I, I can't go 65, 70. I mean, we got seven to eight hours of a trip we have to get behind this. So I try to go at least 10 over. Oh, man, that looks so good. Did they give us some um, forks or spoons or something? Oh, I, oh, here it is. Right there. Cool. I'm going to chow down. HB, what do you think about the food? It's really good. Hey, we're raising canes. You guys got it going on. Really yes, bring one to Maryland. Mm -hmm. Closer to like the Frederick, Maryland area, though. You guys like it? Yeah. yeah. Really small, All right, like so really gas big. here is 189. Let's and let's see here. Just so you guys can see, what I did was we were driving down some city roads, country roads, and we did about probably about 15, 20 miles on the highway at about 75, 80. So I wanted to just kind of stop it here. That way you guys have a good idea of the fuel economy. I dropped down at about 20 MPG. Once we got off the highway and then in the city here, it ended at about 19.7. So what I'll do is I will stop it and then I'll show you guys what the MPG is for this short trip. And then when we stop again, it'll be for a lot longer just on the highway I want to just do highway that way you guys have a better idea of what the truck can get because I'm gonna do about 75 80 miles an hour in the city I got up to about 23 mpg and that was real because I wasn't doing a lot of stop and go I stopped at some uh, lights but I used the stop start system and so normally at a consistent speed the fuel economy is actually really accurate on the on here basically so let's go ahead and see where it stops at and then we'll go from there all right, so we stopped at 5.430. And we're going to do the math here in a second, all right? All right, so 82.2 divided into 5.438. Whoa. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen it that far off. So it's showing on here 19.7. And 15.11 is what we're averaging. That's, wow, that's pretty bad. So, but we'll go ahead and do the rest of the trip. We'll get to the next gas station, and then I'll fill up. But yeah, that's pretty bad. It's off by four MPG, then with the computer saying, wow. All right guys, so we made it home, and unfortunately I did not get you guys any more footage on that trip, but it's okay because I did take some notes on the last tank I did fill up on. So, I wanted to clarify that last, uh, top off that I did when I got gas before that run I think that I might have forgot to top it off because it clicked over and because I was probably doing a lot of stuff at the time I probably could have put another gallon of gas inside my tank so I think I was gonna get closer to 20 to 21 on that run because I was doing like a lot of flat surface driving so there's no reason why the tank was so low unfortunately but nevertheless it's not a big deal but let me go ahead and show you the numbers for the rest of that trip. All right, so when we stopped, we had driven 358.6 miles and the computer was showing 18.4 MPG. Now, when I filled up, I purchased 18.937 gallons at $40.88. The total MPG at the pump was 18.936. So the computer was 0.5 lower. Now normally when I do my MPG runs, I normally don't really use the pump because the computer is really accurate when you're going at a consistent speed. If you do some idling or if you do a lot of stop and go, I feel like that's when the computer fluctuates a lot. And one last thing I want to say too is when I do a lot of city driving, this truck gets about 15 MPG, which is not bad for a truck actually because normally around town we're just using that to kind of go drop the kids off somewhere or go grocery shopping or just little quick trips. And I would think that 15, 16 MPG for a truck is really good. My Hellcat gets like 10 or 11 in the same driving scenario. So that truck does get pretty good gas. Uh, having that mild hybrid system with the stop starts feature does work really well too. It's not sluggish. Like I said in the video, when it's really hot outside, I don't use it because the AC cuts off 
and then the truck gets really warm. But in the winter time, when it's already warm inside the cabin of the truck, it takes a little bit longer for it to get cold. So you don't have to really worry about that stop start feature being an issue. But I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys soon.